I put Luka Doncic in Michael Jordan's draft class to see, could Luka overtake the GOAT? Could he steal MVPs and titles from Mike as? With pick number three, the Chicago Bulls now take Luka Doncic and history will be rewritten. Especially as with pick number four, the Dallas Mavericks now take Michael Jordan, which could give us some pressure-filled NBA Finals matchups in the future. But first, with the Bulls, we can't wait for Scottie Pippen because we only have five seasons to work with, so we need to move fast. That means in order to get Luka could help immediately. We take this Bulls roster and trade Reggie Theus, Dave Greenwood, Ennis Watley, a 1985 and 1987 first round draft pick for Kiki Vanderway, an all-star, a big time scorer who is going to give Luka a worthy wingman to pass the ball to. We're not done there though. We're also able to trade for the giant known as Mark Eden. We shed all of the deadweight contracts from our roster to sign Bill Cartwright and George Johnson, which means in season one, we are hopeful we're able to speed up a rebuild here. Looking at our roster, we do need to play Luka at point guard as we're missing a real point guard. But in the 1980s, this is actually normal behavior with six foot nine Magic Johnson leading the Lakers. And we're hoping that Luka and Kiki are a duo that is comparable to Magic and Kareem or Bird and McHale. Kiki is an 88 overall in 2K, but unfortunately our duo is not quite there yet. Luka is not a year one all-star. Kiki does take that honor for us, but Michael Jordan is named an all-star on the Magic. Mavericks, which means we lose our first mini challenge of this rivalry. This may have to do with our record, as by the end of the season, we win just 33 games with 49 losses, but due to a depleted Eastern Conference, there is still hope. We are actually the seventh seed. We'll take it. Making the playoffs with this roster is a win. Shockingly, with 33 wins, Luka is named Rookie of the Year over Michael Jordan, as Luka averages 18.8 points, 8.6 assists, 7.9 rebounds, 1.1 steals, and both Luka Luka and Mike are named to the second team all NBA as rookies, while also a rookie Hakeem Olajuwon outdoes a real life 2024 Victor Wembanyama and actually goes ahead and wins defensive player of the year with competition stronger than a 2024 Rudy Gobert. Magic Johnson is the MVP this year, but looking at our team, Kiki is second in the entire NBA in scoring. I'm telling you, this man is a great addition to our roster. We might just need to bring in a third star as Kiki averages 29 points per game. And in the the playoffs in year one it is kiki who steps up his game before we get into the playoffs what's up mike here and today we are going to be picking the winners for the giant giveaway i'm doing if you don't know what the giveaway is i'm giving away a ton of rare nba boxes these six boxes of nba cards however originally i said i was going to give these to random subscribers on youtube it will not allow you to pick a random subscriber i am very sorry about that but instead it will allow you to pick a random comment on a video so what i need you to do is in order to enter this giveaway comment down below anyone who comments and is subscribed will be entered into the giveaway and now actually because we're only going off comments your chances of winning are much greater which is a huge plus for anyone watching i'm very sorry for the confusion i did not know you could not pick a random subscriber so instead picking a random comment on this video good luck i hope you win and now let's get into the playoffs against a bad boy pistons team that is very much missing dennis rodman the baddest boy of them all I feel like being called a bad boy in 2024 is pretty corny and kiki seemingly feels the same way as he scores 43 points in a game one upset against Detroit. The Pistons do take game two, but after a game three win by us, we find ourselves with a chance to upset the Pistons and tie game. 22 seconds left in game four. Luka drives, struggles to find any openings, puts up a horrible shot that falls. It goes in. We take a two point lead. Isaiah Thomas goes for the tie. Nope. No good. We advance to round two, where we are immediately embarrassed and swept by Charles Barkley and Moses Malone and the 76ers. Was it even worth winning round one to get swept for the brooms to be taken out on us in round two? I'm not sure. Comment down below what you think. Michael Jordan and the Mavs sweep the Spurs in round one in the West. They beat the Jazz in six in round two, but then got swept by the Lakers in the conference finals. With this many sweeps, we may need to look at applications for a new broom guy. And when the 1985 play playoffs are all said and done. The Lakers do not sweep, but they do win the NBA Finals over the Sixers in six games. Charles Barkley, you were that close to a ring. Not yet, though. Personally, on our side, headed into season two, we have a ton of work to do to get this team into championship contention. That means that in this offseason, we try to create a more modern type roster by trading Bill Cartwright, George Johnson, and a 1989 first round draft pick for Larry Nance, who is going to play the power forward for us, and Kyle Macy, who for right now becomes our 
our starting point guard, but he is on a very short leash. To be honest, I like Luca at point guard, but his 2K overall goes down by two when we put him at point guard. So his positional future is up in the air. And looking at this year's NBA draft, the entire NBA is actually shaken up shook up the suns take carl malone number one patrick ewan goes to the sonics at number two and hakeem olajuwon gets a hall of fame teammate in chris mullen at pick number three our plan for this year's offseason though is to gather as many assets as possible in order to potentially make a big trade next offseason if things don't work out if we go ahead and win the title well we'll be happy with the guys we have in the draft we take spud webb mario ellie and sam vincent in the second round all three solid additions and then in free agency we go ahead and sign Wayne Cooper and Lancaster Gordon, which means we enter year two with a much improved roster as Luka is now playing small forward. The question is, will it be enough? Things definitely look promising with Luka named a second year all-star. Michael Jordan is also an all-star, but by the end of the year, the differences between the two are starting to show. His Mavericks are the second seed in the Western Conference, although Jordan is named just second team All-NBA. Sorry, Mike, compared to our wonder boy, Luka Doncic's first team All-NBA selection in year two. Luca joins Larry Bird as the two first team all NBA forwards. Not bad company to be in with Luca averaging 21.5 points, 9.2 rebounds, 8.9 assists a game with 1.4 steals. Like I said though, Mike has been the team success guy. Our team success is lacking. We do break 500 this year, but we win just 42 games. I guess that is a nine game improvement. But of course, we want to be doing much better than the sixth seed in the East. Magic is MVP again. Sonic's Patrick Ewing is rookie of the year. Hakeem is building up his historical resume with a defensive player of the year again and a second team all NBA selection. If we were keeping a scorecard at home of the best rookies of this draft, he might be winning. Will we see him in the finals one day? Possibly. For now, though, we are focused on our first round matchup this year against a loaded Boston Celtics team who somehow dropped to third in the East. The thing is, though, in game one, Luka actually feeds Larry Nance out of a pick and roll to give us a one point lead late. But it is here where it is Larry legend time. Clock running down. Larry takes the ball, rises up and shoots. And it is in absolute brick in our reality larry bird is somehow a choker as we win game one split the next two games and then in game four luca gives us 22 points and 14 assists in a series ending victory for us yes us we're on to round two versus the nets who are the seven seed we take them down in six games and head on to the eastern conference finals it is here where we face the 76ers again and again we are made to look like absolute fools bring out the brooms in the west Western Conference, the Mavericks and Michael Jordan sweep Patrick Ewing and the Sonics in round one. And then they continue on and take down Clyde Drexler and the Blazers in round two. I'm sure Jordan hits them with a Mavericks type shrug. Luckily for the sake of Luka's ego, it is the Lakers who win the Western Conference and it is the Lakers who sweep the 76ers in the NBA Finals. Charles Barkley's in shambles. He still cannot get that ring he desires. The NBA is in shambles. TV ratings plummet after so many sweeps. What can I say? This is what the Sim is been giving us in year three we are determined to get on the other side of things we're going to be the ones that get the nba's popularity back on track as we need to build a super team that competes with this los angeles lakers juggernaut to start our year three offseason though we have a shocker as kareem abdul jabbar surprises everyone with the decision to retire after back-to-back -back titles that is earlier than in real life but we don't exactly mind as now things are going to be easier for us personally when life hands you lemons watch Kareem walk out the door. In the draft, Ron Harper goes first to the Bullets. The Rockets take Dennis Rodman at number two, continuing to build a great core in Houston. And we land overseas stars Drazen Petrovic at number 12. The main storylines for us, though, come in the form of trades. As we move Mark Eden, Kyle Macy, Lancaster Gordon, Sidney Green, and the Nuggets 1987 first round pick for a star center in Ralph Sampson. This is massive. In real life, Ralph Sampson's career was derailed by injuries, but he was an all-star early on in his career and so we are looking to turn around both our fortunes and his fortunes and Luca's legacy all in one swoop we also need a point guard if we're going to keep playing Luca at the three so we trade Wade and Cooper Spud Webb and Randy Brewer for Larry Drew and now we are all set to finally win at a high level and spoiler alert we do this year we finally break through and win 55 games good for second in the Eastern Conference as both Luca and Ralph Sampson are named first team all NBA with Luca averaging 23.3 points 9.1 
7.1 rebounds, 9.3 assists, 1.4 steals, and 1.4 blocks per game. Jordan is also named first team all NBA and the Mavericks are still a great team. Just a reminder, before we continue, subscribe, turn on post notifications and comment down below to win one of several rare NBA boxes. Now let's get back into the playoffs. They end up sweeping the Sonics and Patrick Ewing in round one. However, when they get an extremely tough matchup versus the Lakers, we're looking at game six where the Lakers are up when, when Jordan has the ball with a chance to win. He isos, takes the shot and makes it. He's Michael Jordan. He forces a game seven that the Mavericks proceed to lose. So that shot is quickly forgotten in NBA history. Speaking of forgotten, can we forget about this year's playoffs in general? As in round one, the Cavs jump out to a two to nothing lead on us. And in game three, we are down by two points late when Luca calls for a pick and roll. The pick comes, Samson is open, but Luca rises up for a three instead that goes in. This shot not only wins us game three, we take games four and five and advance all the way to round two just round two that's where we lose to the pistons brighter days are to come i swear it we are getting luca his championship we are not going to go out like this and if we get that title all i want you to do is please subscribe turn on post notifications we're all in this together for now in our current situation the sixers do end up facing the lakers in the finals and they take the championship in five games which means amazingly in luca's world charles barkley gets the ring he has always wanted along with a finals mvp in the process how would that dynamic be Chuck trash talking Shaq saying I got my ring first shut up it's not a world I want to live in but we're here and we need a ring we need our own finals MVP so in our fourth offseason there is no playing around whatsoever recapping the draft the Hawks get David Robinson at number one and Scottie Pippen falls all the way to 14 to the Kings in a future scenario I might be stealing that man but as for now we look around the trade market and realize if we trade away Drazen Petrovic for basically nothing just a pick we can afford to sign Byron Scott in free agency so that is exactly what we do this does lead us to making a controversial move as we now are giving the ball back to Luka Doncic as a starting point guard but I mean if we're being honest look at magic success as Larry Drew is now our sixth man Luka will be leading a now semi super team in my opinion as we have Luka at the one Byron Scott at the two Kiki at the three Larry Nance at the four and Ralph Sampson at the five and we are finally on what looks like a road to greatness Luka at the point guard does work perfectly we win 60 games and finish first in the Eastern Conference by 11 games. Only there is one catch. While we are the best team in the Eastern Conference, Luka is only second team all NBA this season as his stats suffer with six man Larry Drew eating at his minutes, something I did not expect. Luka does average 20.4 points, 8.2 rebounds, 10.1 assists, and 1.4 steals per game, but it is Michael Jordan who wins the MVP over Luka this year. And to make things even worse, Jordan's Mavs have have a league high 69 wins we are struggling to find a silver lining we've got to win in the playoffs this is going to be tough but we do have a star-studded roster, and it is here where Ralph Sampson emerges. Ralph gives us back-to-back 30-point -back nights as we take down the Pistons in games one and two, and then in game three, down two, Luka has the ball, calls for an iso, rises up for a three, and bricks it, bricks it. In a nice twist, we do immediately win game four, but that would have been memorable. Hold on to that thought, as we are now in game seven in Boston, and in game seven this time, the Celtics are down two, when it is Larry Bird who rises up and sticks a three in our face. Five seconds left. We call timeout. Things are dire. Only it is here where Luca provides us with some potential Luca magic. Out of this timeout, Luca grabs the ball and connects on a game winner that sends us to the Eastern Conference Finals. We are taking on Chuck and the Sixers, and this is another back and forth affair. Again, this series comes down to seven games, but this time, Ralph Sampson scores 18 second half points, and we take game seven with ease, sending us to the NBA Finals against none other than Michael Jordan. Jordan. Jordan just took down the Sonics in a sweep in the Western Conference Finals. So now we have Luka vs. Mike, 1988 NBA Finals. Will it live up to the hype? Game one sees Luka score 34 points with 11 assists. However, Jordan puts up 55 points in a masterpiece as Dallas wins a close one. In game two, though, Ralph Sampson proves to be an unstoppable force and Chicago steals home court advantage, bringing us to game six, where suddenly it is the Bulls who are up three to two when Luka brings the ball up, score tied, 
seconds remaining he rises up for a jumper and instead finds byron scott who shoots and it's a dagger the chicago bulls are your 1988 nba champions as ralph sampson wins finals mvp over luca which means for luca's goat legacy this is nice we love a title we love a championship but we still have a mission to accomplish for year five we want an mvp and a finals mvp so in this year's offseason we just have one goal get luca that mvp which means we trade larry drew away for lasalle thompson that way luca is freed up to play more minutes with a center now at the sixth man as opposed to a point guard in the draft mitch richmond goes first to the hawks and interestingly we get the seventh pick and grab a nice role player in john starks who if we were to continue to keep going would become an all-star level player but we will take a rookie starks off the bench and year five is luca's year to shine looking at this season we see we reach our peak we play at the highest of levels as we lead the entire nba with 69 wins while the mavericks only have a mere 63 take that jordan what's more the man has done it luca wins mvp with 29 points 9.9 rebounds 13.3 assists 2.2 steals and one block per game averaging almost a triple double for the year and michael jordan now is only second team all nba in a hilarious turn of fate hakeem by the way wins defensive player of the year for the fifth time in a row in the playoffs in year five we sweep past the pistons we sweep past the knicks and the washington bullets give us a lot of trouble in the eastern conference finals however luka Doncic is now unlocked as a scorer and he gives us 52 points in a game six win that also sees him finish with 14 assists a true megastar performance this means in the 1989 nba finals we have a rematch chicago bulls versus dallas mavericks luka versus michael jordan luka needs this victory to have a young goat worthy run and game one is a breeze kiki and samson both score over 30 points luca has 18 assists and we get off to a very nice start in this series until just one game later in game two we cannot hit anything as a team we shoot just 28 percent as jordan scores 42 to take home court advantage so game three in dallas suddenly feels like a must win and with 15 seconds left to go the ball is in jordan's hands when he goes to work he raises up for a leaner and it is good with only four seconds left and no timeouts we're forced to throw it up the court where luca grabs the ball and makes a deep three at the buzzer to win this game a truly historic moment as we cruise from here the bulls win games four and five and luca is your 1989 nba finals mvp averaging a triple double against michael jordan for his career luca is a two-time champ one-time nba finals mvp one-time real mvp three-time first team all nba two-time second team Team all nba overall great accolades overall he did better than mike and comparing the ends of their careers in terms of game highs luca finishes with 52 points 18 field goals made four three-pointers made 22 free throws made 17 rebounds 22 assists seven steals and five blocks while jordan had 56 points 23 field goals made two three-pointers made 22 free throws made 13 rebounds 13 assists nine steals and seven blocks which means luca overtook mike in three-pointers tied for free throws and had more rebounds offensive rebounds and assists while mike took points field goals made steals and blocks a very very close competition between the two of them i want to know what scenario you want to see next down below if you're not already subscribed with notifications turned on please subscribe and turn on post notifications that way you never miss another video like this if you're still here i really think you will like what if victor Wembanyama played in michael jordan's era or you will like what if every recent mvp was added to lebron james draft class if you're already subscribed thank you so so much for supporting you're awesome we all know it and as always have an awesome day and peace